Today, we're diving into the blood transfusion process, from the moment it's indicated to the final documentation and post-care. This procedure requires precision, vigilance, and teamwork to protect the patient from preventable harm. First, we confirm the indication for the transfusion. Understanding why blood is needed is crucial. Red blood cells are transfused to restore oxygen levels, typically when hemoglobin drops below 7 GDL. Platelets are given when counts fall below 10,000 per UL, especially before invasive procedures. Fresh frozen plasma and cryoprecipitate are reserved for correcting coagulopathies, not just for volume replacement. The key question is, does this transfusion improve outcomes or is it unnecessary exposure? Next, we enter a complete physician or advanced practice order, detailing the component, dose, and any special requirements. Before proceeding, we must obtain and document informed consent, explaining the purpose and potential reactions. Premedication is not routine. It's reserved for those with prior mild reactions. At the bedside, we draw a type and screen specimen using two independent identifiers, the patient's full name and medical record number. Label the sample in the patient's presence to ensure accuracy. If no previous type exists, a second independent sample may be needed for verification. The blood bank performs ABO and RH typing, antibody screening, and compatibility testing before releasing any unit. Now, we prepare the patient and equipment with a focused assessment of their history and potential reactions. It's important to explain the process to the patient and instruct them to report any unusual symptoms. We record baseline vital signs, temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, and oxygen saturation. Selecting an appropriate IV site is key. Ideally, we use an 18 to 20 gauge peripheral line for adults. Only normal saline is used for priming and flushing. Other solutions can cause serious issues. Assemble a blood administration set with a filter, ensuring it's free of air and connected to a dedicated line. If rapid transfusion is needed, set up an approved blood warmer. Never improvise with external heat sources. A qualified staff member collects the blood from the blood bank in a temperature-controlled container. We check the integrity of the bag, expiration date, unit number, blood type, and any special attributes. If anything seems off, we return it immediately. Safety first. At the bedside, two licensed clinicians perform the final check together, verifying all critical details. They confirm the patient's full name, blood unit number, product type, ABO and RH compatibility, and the physician's order. This final check is the most critical safety step in the entire process. No mismatch is allowed. If there's any uncertainty, we stop and contact the blood bank immediately. Now, we initiate the transfusion by performing hand hygiene, donning gloves, and connecting the tubing to the patient's IV. We start slowly for the first 10 to 15 minutes, closely observing for early reactions like flushing or fever. At the 15 minute mark, we reassess vital signs. If stable, we can increase the rate as ordered. Each unit must be completed within four hours of removal from controlled storage to ensure safety. Throughout the transfusion, we continue monitoring the patient and documenting vital signs regularly. Most reactions occur within the first 15 minutes, but we stay vigilant until the end. We watch for febrile reactions, allergic reactions, hemolytic reactions, and circulatory overload. If a reaction occurs, we stop the transfusion immediately and keep the IV line open with normal saline. We assess the patient, maintain airway and hemodynamics, and notify the provider and blood bank right away. We save the blood bag and tubing for analysis and provide supportive care based on the reaction type. When the unit is complete, we clamp the tubing, record the stop time, and flush the line if ordered. We document the unit number, product type, volume infused, and patient response thoroughly. After the transfusion, we recheck vital signs and monitor for delayed reactions that may appear later. We educate the patient to report any symptoms like jaundice or fatigue promptly. Evaluating the effectiveness of the transfusion is crucial. We check hemoglobin or platelet counts post-transfusion. Finally, we document everything to ensure full traceability and close the hemovigilance loop. In special situations, we activate the massive transfusion protocol early and coordinate with the blood bank. Only normal saline may run concurrently through the same line. 
we never mix with other fluids. Every transfusion carries both benefit and risk, and our duty is to make each one as safe as possible. Through vigilance, verification, and compassion, we protect our patients and uphold the standard of care.